Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Hazardous pollution in Indian capital spurs call for schools closure. First heat, then floods wipe out farms in Pakistan's Chile capital. And hundreds march in crisis hit Sri Lanka protesting tax hikes crackdowns. And now for all the details. Residents of Indian capital New Delhi were effectively breathing smoke on Thursday as the AQI air quality index breached the severe and hazardous categories raising calls to close schools. According to data from the Central Pollution Control Board, the AQI exceeded 450 at many places. Delhi's 20 million residents were effectively breathing smoke on Thursday as the air quality index breached the severe and hazardous categories in nearly all monitoring stations of the Indian capital, raising calls to close schools. Students arrived at schools in the early hours of the morning to attend classes as heavy blankets of smoke covered the city. Priyank Kanungu, the chairperson of the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, said they were issuing a notice to the Delhi government to close schools if it cannot give clean air to the children. There are problems in this way. There are many problems in this way. There are many problems in other or bhi bimariyan hain jo ki bachon ko hoti hi rehti hai kabhi bachche sahi nahi rehte iski wajah se some students who were visiting india gate war memorial for picnic from school also demanded the schools to be shut down the aqi exceeded 450 at many places early in the day according to data from the central pollution control board a reading over 400 affects healthy people with serious impacts on those with existing diseases ha main chahta hu ki kuch din ko chutti mil jaye taki vayu pradushan kam ho jaye और लोगों को भी छुट्टी मिल जाए ऑफिस से ताकि वो भी कार पार कर चले आए इसलिए कब वाइब्रेशन कम हो जाए New Delhi is blanketed in smog every winter as cold heavy air traps construction dust vehicle emissions and smoke from the burning of crop stubble in the neighboring states to clear the fields for the next crop authorities this week stopped most construction and demolition work to curb dust pollution and appeal people to work from home when possible and reduce the use of coal and firewood at home Pakistan's ex-PM Imran Khan was injured after a firing incident was reported during his long march rally towards capital Islamabad on Thursday. Local media reported he was shot in the leg and was safe. The culprit had been reportedly arrested. Former Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan was wounded in the shin on Thursday when his convoy was shot at in the country's east. A man opened fire with an automatic weapon. Several people were wounded, Asad Umar, a senior PTI leader, told Reuters news agency. 70-year-old Khan was leading a protest march on Islamabad to demand snap elections. In a video posted on its Twitter account, his opposition PTI party said that Khan was shot in the leg but was stable while being taken to hospital. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif condemned the shooting and ordered the interior minister to seek an immediate investigation. Local media reported the culprit had been arrested. The attack happened less than a week after Khan began his march towards capital Islamabad from Lahore city, along with thousands of supporters. Since his ousting in a parliamentary vote in April, Khan has alleged that he was the victim of a conspiracy engineered by his successor Shehbaz Sharif and the United States claims that both the new premier and Washington have denied. Floods that wreaked havoc across Pakistan in August and September on the back of several years of high temperatures have left chili farmers struggling to cope. The effect is also being felt in Kunri, a Pakistani town known as Asia's chili capital, with traders saying there is a huge drop in produce compared to previous years. Near Kunri, 
a southern Pakistani town known as Asia's chili capital, 40-year-old farmer Lehman Raj rustles through dried plants looking for any of the bright red chilies in his largely destroyed crop that may have survived the recent floods. Floods that wreaked havoc across Pakistan in August and September on the back of several years of high temperatures have left chili farmers struggling to cope. In a country heavily dependent on agriculture, the more extreme climate conditions are hitting rural economies hard, underscoring the vulnerability of swaths of South Asia's population to changing weather patterns. <laughs> बारिश में वो नुकसान था जो जाम बरसात बारिश जाम बची उन्हें नुकसान था ये काफी नुकसान थे मिर्चन था यही हालत थी ये मिर्चन जी ये कि बूटा वाला सब खत्म थी या सड़ी पाकिस्तान इस रैंक फोर्थ इन द वर्ल्ड फॉर चिली प्रोडक्शन विथ 150,000 एकर्स ऑफ फार्म्स प्रोड्यूसिंग 143,000 टन्स एन्युअली इन Though mounds of bright red chili dot the market, traders said there is a huge drop on previous years. This time, pe mandi ke andar 8,000-10,000 bori hoti thi pichle saal. To is saal ab dekh rahe aap ye takriban 2,000 bori hai. Aaj yafte ka pehla din hai. Isi wajah se abhi kal parsu aur zyada kam hota jayega. Yani ye 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500 ke andar hi bori aati rehti hai. Dr. Ata Ulla Khan, director of Arid Zone Research Center at Pakistan's Agricultural Research Council, said the heat waves over the past three years had affected the growth of chili crops in the area, causing diseases that curl their leaves and stun their growth. Now the floods pose a whole new set of challenges for which planning has to be done on a very large scale. Taliban officials have said that the cultivation of poppy has dropped to zero level since narcotics were banned in April. The Islamic Emirate has rejected a recent report by the United Nations stating that opium cultivation has increased by nearly a third in Afghanistan. Officials in the counter-narcotics department of Taliban's interior ministry have said that the cultivation of poppy has dropped to zero level after a UN report this week stated that opium cultivation has increased by nearly a third in Afghanistan. The Taliban authorities banned cultivation of opium poppy and all narcotics under strict new laws in April 2022. However, the report by United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime UNODC says that the cultivation of opium poppies in Afghanistan has increased by 32% over the previous year to 233,000 hectares making the 2022 crop the third largest area under cultivation since monitoring began. According to the report, opium prices have risen following the cultivation ban in April. Income made by Afghan farmers from opium sales more than tripled, from $425 million in 2021 to $1.4 billion in 2022, the report reads. Afghan farmers are trapped in the illicit opiate economy, while Caesar events around Afghanistan suggest that opiate traffic continues unabated, UNODC Executive Director Gada Wali said. Hasibullah Ahmadi, the head of the office for the Deputy Minister of Counter-Narcotics said, we deny this report. There has been no drug dealing since the ban, he said. The Taliban has claimed that more than 2,200 hectares of lands have been cleared of poppy plants so far. Moving on. Hundreds of demonstrators in Sri Lanka marched in Colombo City on Wednesday protesting against higher taxes, inflation and alleged state-led repression as the country struggles to emerge from its worst financial crisis. They were blocked by police as they attempted to reach a central part of the city where the president's house and other ministries are located. Hundreds of people marched in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo on Wednesday and protested against higher taxes, inflation and alleged state-led repression as the country struggles to emerge from its worst financial crisis in seven decades. The anti-government protests jointly organized by opposition political parties, trade unions and civil society groups was blocked by police as marchers attempted to reach a central part of the city where the president's house and other ministries are located. 
Widespread protests in July resulted in former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa fleeing the country and resigning after protesters stormed his office and residence. And this is only a first step in a long march in order to promote democratic change. We believe in democratic change. We need an election. We need to give the people a chance to provide the country with a new government, with a new mandate. And we shall achieve this through democratic means. Sri Lanka has been gripped by a deep financial crisis this year caused by record low foreign exchange reserves that has left the island of 22 million people struggling to pay for essential imports, including fuel, food, cooking gas and medicine. Incumbent President Ranil Vikramasinghe will be presenting his first budget on November 14 that is likely to include steep tax increases and other reforms to put the country's tattered economy back on track and get approval from the International Monetary Fund for a $2.9 billion bailout. However, increased taxes coming on top of soaring inflation that hit 66% in October is triggering public discontent. Lawyers associations in India's Gujarat state have announced that they will not represent the nine accused arrested over the bridge collapse in Morbi that killed at least 135 people on Sunday. Meanwhile, rescue operations continued at the incident site on Thursday to find one missing person. Lawyers of bar associations of Morbi and Rajkot on Wednesday paid tribute to the victims of the deadly bridge collapse incident in India's Gujarat state and announced that they will not represent the accused in court. Local police arrested nine people on Monday, including ticketing clerks and contractors, as they investigate the collapse of the colonial era bridge, which killed at least 135 people. Gujarat on Wednesday also observed a one-day state mourning to remember the departed souls and in solidarity with their families. ये मोरबी बार एसोसिएशन और राजकोट बार एसोसिएशन ने ऐसा निर्णय किया है कि ये जो दुर्घटना हुई है उसका जो तो मतदार है उसको भी नाइन परसेंट्स को अरेस्ट किया गया है अभी उसका कोई केस राजकोट बार एसोसिएशन और मोरबी बार एसोसिएशन लड़ाई नहीं करेंगे Meanwhile, rescue operations continued at the incident site for a fifth day on Thursday to find one missing person. The colonial era suspension footbridge in Morbi town over the Machu River was packed with sightseers around the Diwali and Chhat Puja festivals when it gave away on Sunday evening, sending people plunging about 10 meters into the river. In a bid to promote saffron tourism in India's Jammu in Kashmir, a festival was organized for the benefit of growers and buyers, during which a live demonstration of traditional harvesting style was also showcased. Kashmiri saffron is famous across the world due to its superior quality. In a bid to promote saffron tourism in Pampor area of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir, a saffron festival was organized this week for the benefit of growers and also attract visitors towards the valley. During the event, many different activities including cultural programs and painting exhibition were organized and a group of girls also gave live demonstration of harvesting of saffron in traditional style. Saffron is considered the costliest spice in the world and Kashmiri saffron is much superior to the Iranian saffron, its long-time competitor. Saffron and saffron fields have always been major attraction for the tourists in Jammu and Kashmir. I think that it's a very happy thing. It's a happy thing that people come and see. And it's an excitement. जज्बा के साथ एक जज्बा के साथ यहाँ लोग इस फेस्टिवल को मनाएंगे इसमें मुद्दा ये है कि जितने भी हमारे टूरिस्ट लोग भी बाहर से आते हैं वो कभी टूलिप को देखने आते हैं कभी सैफरान को देखने आते हैं लेकिन आपको पता है कि सैफरान जो पूरी दुनिया में कल्टीवेट हो रहा है इसे सबसे जो ज्यादा है जो सबसे फेमस सैफरान है वो कश्मीर का सैफरान है इसी हवाले से एक कड़ी है आज सैफरान फेस्टिवल मनाया जा रहा है मुझे लगता है कि बहुत बहुत सारे लोग आए हैं बाहर के लोग भी कुछ आए हैं Kashmiri saffron also has a huge demand in the national and international market. The harvesting season of saffron began just few days ago and during this season, tourists always prefer to visit saffron fields to spend some time. Saffron is one of the world's costliest spices by weight. Around 75,000 saffron blossoms produce a single pound of saffron spice and the cost varies between 2.411 US dollar and 3.617 US dollar per kilogram. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.